Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. So it is go time as we have only a week left before we set sail across the Pacific Ocean. We have a huge shipment arrived with all of our last minute orders from the States and are on track to leave for the biggest adventure of our lives when we receive some shocking news that could potentially end our Pacific crossing dreams. Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? I'm from Anguilla, a beautiful little island in the Caribbean. And I recently heard about this experience of crossing the Pacific through one of my sort of childhood friends, Colleen. You know, she shared that she was crossing the Pacific and I just, I couldn't even imagine doing something like this. And I recently quit my job, so I was also traveling, but in Southeast Asia. So I've never sailed before. This is the first time and a pretty big one, the biggest ocean. So I don't really know what I'm getting myself into, um, but I'm up for the adventure and I can't wait. Okay, another thing that's happening today is Philo is arriving. He is an ex-crew member and he's coming back. Let's see what he thinks of the boat. He hasn't seen a lot of the stuff that we've done in the last year and a half or so. So um, I think he'll be pretty excited to be here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's all new, this is all new. Yeah, the art top is all new. It was it was just a frame in a in a, um, in a shipyard when I left. Hello, my name is Philo. I was on Parley already about three years ago. Back then we were trying to cross the Pacific and then COVID and then the bulkheads and all that uh, jazz happened and now we are back to it, <laughs> trying it again, take two. All I know is that crossing the Pacific with a crew like this, knowing you can rely on a great crew, a great captain, uh, you know, having this sense of trust in the people around you, I think is very rare. That is what makes this opportunity unique. We're gonna have eight crew, that is eight mouths to feed, and we have 2,600 miles to go to the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia. So the first thing we've just started talking about is food. Food is gonna be a major issue. Um, we think that the best way to do it is come up with a Monday to, Monday to Sunday, meal plan prep. Provisioning for an ocean crossing is a huge job and entails multiple trips to the grocery store to get everything that we need. We were going to be eight crew on the crossing plus two dogs so a lot of mouths to feed. It's actually only day one and it's our second trip to the shop so we are knocking it out quick. Hopefully today we have done at least 70% of our shopping but yeah we're just getting the oils, milks, Canned chicken, that's going to be our favourite one. Olive oil. We better get some olive oil. French Polynesia is also extremely expensive, so anything we buy in Mexico will end up saving me in the long run. So I spent around $5,000 that week on food and provisions, which I was hoping would last quite some time. It fits! Okay. Yeah, Jesus. Ah! Wait, did you all fit in there? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> is Philo on the roof or what? We bought about a thousand tins of food, 200 kilograms of dried goods, and about a thousand cans of beer. We would have bought even more, but as always, it's storage and weight that's the issue. I think we're gonna pull the labels off, because cockroaches can get in and lay eggs, and then you can have a full-on infestation on the boat. We're also gonna label the tops. We've already got a pretty good system. Chickpeas, they're CP. So we've got CP on the top, just so when you're looking down, under the bed or in the lockers, 
can see exactly what it is because we're going to pull these off. Big job, but I think it's worth it in the long run. We were almost done stowing all of the food when I got a call from a friend in need. So our friend Steve was heading out for a little sail with um, Al and uh, he lost his engine and almost ended up on the rocks over here and ended up right next to the jet, jet ski shed. Spun around and sailed back into the marina area um, but his engine wasn't going in and out of gear. Rescue! Barley rescue! <laughs> the more aft I am, the more control I have. I'll be able to push him that way pretty easily because I'm way out here. But I'll also, if I go hard over, I'll be able to push his stern that way. If I was midships, everything I do will be trying to push him that way. So the further back I am, the better. Just like absolute trip of a lifetime. The amazing adventures we've had, the ways I've grown and learned so much about um, trip planning and sailing and to learn under Colin and he was so generous with his time and so great at teaching me and just having faith in me to like go and take the wrenches and go and take the sail drive apart and you know do all the wiring and stuff with them and so to be able to learn and to have the opportunity to like be part of that and give back to the boat was also really special because for me that was what drew me to Parley in the first place. It's hard when you become this close with everyone and um, yeah it's uh it's yeah let's say until next time. Holy crap just got a message that the dinghy and the massive shipment from Texas is here. So this has got so many goodies for us that we need to cross the Pacific. So this is super exciting. It's what we've been waiting for for like two months. What are you looking forward to the most? The fishing rods. Oh. <laughs> $3,800 in shipping it cost me to get this from Texas to here. So, expensive operation. This is a thousand pounds. Nine foot long, three foot wide. He's heavy. Oh! oh. <laughs> uh, autopilot? Oh, it's too late. Yeah. This is heavy as You got it? This was a thousand pounds. All of this weight is getting added to the boat, plus eight crew, plus all our provisioning and gear and everything that weighs a ton. Luckily, she's got brand new bulkheads, so she's strong. Starting maritime dish. I get my head around all of this. These lines are from Precision Sales. Dyneema Core. That is so sexy. Nice little soft shackle on the end of that. We had so many awesome products to be excited about. But as already mentioned, storage is the issue on pretty much any liverboard boat that you go on. But as we were packing everything away, along came Stephen, the winner of our patron draw to cross the Pacific Ocean with us. I'm Stephen McLeod, I'm a patron of Collins and uh, was chosen to do the crossing. I never thought that I was going to get the opportunity to do. More than grateful to Colin and crew for giving me the opportunity. Really looking forward to it. Oh my god, we just went to lift the dinghy up and the bridle snapped. Imagine if that happened when we're underway doing eight knots perfect timing because we've got all these new lines from Precision Sales. You said this is a good knot. Oh, <laughs> so we cut up one of our old halyards to use as a dinghy bridle and carried on replacing all of our running rigging. When we replace halyards we use a bit of fishing line to butt connect both lines because it's a major hassle if the join snaps and you have to completely rerun the halyard. We replaced all the halyards, furling lines and sheets and finished off with a brand new topping lid. Oh yeah, oh. that's how you make the magic happen there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do, let's get out of the wind, I'm going to do a rigging inspection. I feel like now is close enough to the time of departure, but not 
so close that we can't get something replaced if we have to. And then once I'm done and I find nothing, hopefully, uh, I'm gonna pay a rigger to go do a rig inspection as well. It's like $150, not a lot of money for peace of mind across the Pacific, especially after two lightning strikes. You know what, I'm gonna start right here at the diamond shrouds, looking for any broken strands or anything like that, any cracks. All the way down here, same deal. They all look okay. So I thoroughly checked the shrouds, the swage fittings, toggles, turnbuckles and chain planes before heading up the mast to check tangs and the top ends of all the shrouds. No cracks in the swages. To my unprofessional eye, everything looked to be totally fine. While I was up there, I had to install a new halyard for our brand new Code D sail. As it wasn't a replacement, I had no old halyard to pull it through with, so just sent it down on its own. Oh my God, I've just got to the end of the line. And he still can't see it at the bottom, so it's obviously caught on something. So I'm gonna have to send it all the way back. Try again. It's annoying. Unbelievable, it's stuck. Look at this. What the hell? The more I pull it, the more wedge it's probably getting. Damn it. Bizarre. So we kept sending this halyard line down and I feel like I didn't realize these spreaders go all the way through. Well, there's a bracket on the inside here. I could see that when I looked in the radar hole here and all of this line has sort of bunched up somewhere and just piled on top of itself. But when I went to pull it back out, there's a huge ball. It's probably the size of my fist and it's created a knot that isn't letting uh, the halyard down anymore so we can't pull it this way and we've got nothing to pull it here so Colleen just actually come up with a genius idea to use a, a coat hanger with a hook on it like this and send it up one of the other halyards and hope that we catch the stuck halyard and pull it down and then we can pull it all the way down and hopefully bring the knot down to one of the holes and deal with it there. The lesson here guys is to send something a bit more sacrificial down with a weight on it or a sinker or something. So in it goes. Okay, all right Colleen, bring me something good. Ooh. Yeah, I can hear the halyard or the hook. Okay, what have we got? Oh my God. Probably make another knot right here. <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> <I'm so excited. laughs> Good thinking, Colleen. Ooh. Player of the day. Man of the match. Oh, here it is. Here it is. There it is. Oh. That's what I was trying to undo at the head of the mast in behind the sheave. I had like this much gap. Look how tight that thing is. So happy right now. We wrapped up the day inflating the brand new high field and then we looked to throw on the new four stroke Tohatsu outboard. Okay, here we have the brand spanking new Tohatsu, which is going to go on the new high field dinghy. Um, it's a 9.8 four stroke. The idea with this is to be able to plane with two people and two dogs. Man, don't you love a brand new engine? Okay, it's cool. Check it again once it's been run. So, because it's brand new, there is a break-in procedure. So we don't want to just jump in it and just start flying around on it. Total of 10 hours, basically, before you can go full throttle at all. Let's see, first pull. Ooh, that nearly started. Oh, just joking. Whoa. Look at that. So quiet. Second so, pull. So quiet. I think it's safe to say that the dinghy was going to plane with no issues as this was only half throttle. You may be wondering why we needed another dinghy, but with eight crew all the time wanting to do different things, the one dinghy just wasn't going to be enough to explore French Polynesia. So this will be the uh, um, hoisting procedure. This is our new halyard that we just retrieved this morning. 
For short distances, we were just going to leave the dinghy alongside like this, so it would be super convenient. Okay, morning guys. We are going to move to La Cruz for overnight. We are going to get the rig inspected. As you saw, I've done my own rig inspection, but I'm going to pay a professional to do one as well. Just for that peace of mind as we are uh, about to go on the biggest adventure in our, our lives. So this company called PWI Inc. They saw in one of the episodes our horrendous old fenders and they sent us some new ones. These things are legit. We normally got six fenders because they take up so much space. And in this little bag here, there's eight fenders. We're about to go to La Cruz, so we'll uh, get these ones pumped up and see what they uh, look like. But the quality looks insane. And you can apparently just deflate them like it is now and just throw the whole thing in the washing machine. This is an absolute game changer. It sucks having to store these big plastic ones all the time. So we pump them up. So they say to inflate them to at least five and a half psi so that they're nice and firm. There we go. One, three. Yeah, perfect. We do the paddle boards to about 12, so it's not it's less than half of that. Easy. They're light too. <laughs> this big spherical one will be good because the hull is curved obviously, so we can stick these on the bow and stern and uh, they'll obviously touch the dock before these ones will. They also sent us a couple of spare, um, I guess they're called bladders or something. If you do happen to get a nail or something all the way through, uh, you just throw a new one of these in. We pumped the rest up by hand, which actually turned out to be quicker than the electric pump. It's so easy to pump up. These are the nicest fenders I've ever seen. Look at this pile of fenders compared to the last pile, and there was only six of the other ones. And these take up what? A fifth of the space? Yeah. When deflated, and that they're not going to leave dirty brown marks all over the hull. PYI Inc. Thank you. We also checked to see how the dinghy would fit on the bow for those slightly longer trips. On the Pacific crossing, I'm going to take the motor off completely and then put it upside down on one of the hulls. Just so if we take a big wave over the bow, the water can still get through the trampoline and not fill up the dinghy. So we arrived at La Cruz Marina and went straight to the fuel dock to top up all the tanks, which hold a thousand litres of diesel and all of our jerry cans with gas, as this may be hard to come by in French Polynesia. The rigger Eddie then arrived to do the inspection, but after 20 minutes or so, came down to deliver some horrible, horrible news. They're not that, that bad, but they are cracked, you know, they're, there's no broken strands, but they, they did catch my attention because I could even touch it with my nail. Proper hairline crack. Yep. So the rigger had found a tiny hairline crack on the outside of the swage fitting for one of the cap shrouds, only visible because of a tiny amount of rust seeping out of the crack after he had scrubbed it with the squatch pad. So this is how fast things can change in this game. We were meant to cross the Pacific Wednesday, but looks like it's going to be pushed back. So now we're just trying to figure out how we can get some standing rigging down here as soon as possible because it's 16 mil cable. Stainless steel. Yeah, so yeah, that's where we're at. It just sucks. This was the worst possible news that he could have given us in this moment. It was an absolute no-brainer for me at this point that all of the standing rigging would need to be replaced if I was going to be able to sleep at night. But the local weather router was telling us that there may only be one more weather window this season to cross the Pacific. After a bunch of phone calls, we found that we could not get the shrouds anywhere in Mexico. So we would need a miracle to get everything from the States down in time for us to be able to cross this year. It was starting to feel a lot like the universe just didn't want us to cross the Pacific, again. To say I was demoralized was an understatement. But anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm not one to give up, because when there's a will, there's a way.